In this demo, we will go over the creation of a basic flow using the documentation found on our flow tutorial site. So we're going to walk over those steps in detail just so that you can kind of see how they lay out. As part of this flow, we're going to use a variety of pre-canned messages. So before following this flow, I encourage you to come in and create a message that prompts your caller to enter her or his customer number. Also, to create a message that informs the caller when the call has been completed, just saying thanks, you can hang up now. You should provide a hold music for use in this sample flow. In this case, I have provided a normal Serenova hold music. You do want to create a prompt that lets callers know if they make a wrong choice that they can try to enter again. We do want a prompt for a main menu where callers can press one for support or two for sales. We want a prompt for the satisfaction survey that we'll create at the end of this call. We're going to rate that survey on a scale of one to five. So the message here just says, please rate your experience with us on a scale of one to five, with five being the highest. You want to create a thank you note, just saying thanks for calling us today, and a welcome note to start the call off saying hello and thank you for calling. Once you have these media files created, the very next step to do would be to go into the flows section. I'm going to create a new flow. So I'm just going to call this tutorial flow. What we'll do is we're going to make this a customer flow. In other words, a flow where we're going to take a caller through a series of audio operations. When we create this new flow, we are going to receive a blank sheet with which to work. And that blank sheet will be how we can begin to create the flow itself. So once the flow opens up, this is our blank canvas that we can use to create a brand new flow. All operations are going to be drag and drop. All the controls that we are dragging are going to be on the left hand side of the screen and we're going to be dropping those onto the right hand side of the screen. Every flow has to have a starting point and it has to have an ending point. So let's start by bringing in a flow starting point. So when a new call arrives in the flow, this is where we are going to jump in at. The very first operation we're going to want to do is a play media operation. So I'm going to drag that play media operation right here. If you're having a hard time locating any operation whatsoever, feel free just to type in the name of the operation and note it will filter down just to the particular kind of flows that you're looking for. So on this play media operation, we are going to go ahead and click on it. And this is going to be our welcome greeting. So I think you'll notice that we have a, a bunch of different files here. I'm just using my mouse bar to scroll down here. And so here is my tutorial welcome greeting. You want to leave loop disabled and you want to select participant to be equal to customer. To connect these two elements, you click on the circle and notice there's a little arrow that comes up. You click and drag from there to there and that creates a connection between those two elements. Now, after we play our media, we want to ask the caller to press one for sales or press two for support. And for us to do that, we're going to focus on what is called a collect digits step. So I'll bring the collect digits step right here. Now again, the participant is gonna be customer. In this media step, we're gonna go ahead and focus on that main menu where we said press one for sales, press two for support. I'm gonna wait only for a single digit press. I'll give them up to 10 seconds to enter that digit. I'm going to end the data entry if they hit pound and whatever value they enter, if they enter one or they enter two, I'm going to bind it to a variable called menu. And again, to connect these two, click on play media, go to the arrow, click and drag, connect it to digits and you're done. Now I have to change, I have to make a decision based upon whether they press one or they press two. So going up to the top, I'm going to grab this decision branch. This lets me do an if then logic. So I'm going to drop the decision branch in. I'm going to put the collect digits in to the decision branch by going there, dragging and making that happen. Now we do need to tell the system what to do if different options are pushed. One of the things we want to do is if they press one to put them into the sales queue. So with that in mind, I'm going to queue with media which means put a call into a queue and play a hold music or a media file 
while it's waiting for an agent. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and drop them into the sales queue, like so. You'll notice that it's asking me for the media file. This is where I will specify the hold music. And note that I'm going to leave callback enabled as a disabled step. If I enable it, I have a lot more to configure. If I disable it, those options disappear. When an agent is found, this queue with media step will exit and continue processing, and we will know the name of the agent. We call that a resource in our system. So whatever agent gets the interaction, we're going to bind to the variable agent here. Now I do need to tell the condition step when it should go in this direction. So I'm going to drag my line here, and I'm going to make a conditional choice. Now the syntax for this decision is a little unusual. You want to say equals, so parentheses, then the equals, and again parentheses is shift nine, right? Equals, space. Remember that when the caller enters their choice one or two, I'm going to bind it to a variable called menu. I made that choice um, over in the play media step, but in the collect digit step. So I said whatever they choose here and collect digits, I'm going to bind a menu. So when I come to this step here, equals menu, and so I'm going to do the string value one. So if the caller enters a value one, I want them to go this route. Also note that it's a great idea to leave some helpful notes, like by the way, one for sales. So I can say one for sales. Whenever you put little notes like this on your arrows, it becomes a very easy way to see what is happening inside your flow. Now at the same time, I want to go in the support queue. In the support queue, we are choosing to ask callers to enter their customer number if they know it. This is just a choice we're making. Obviously your call flow might not have to make that choice. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on here and I'm gonna go on that arrow and connect it here. The conditional step again, uh, two for support. So parentheses, which is shift nine equals menu. That's the caller's choice. Whatever they enter, I put in menu, quote, two, quote, and then shift zero for the close parentheses. And when I say quote, I do mean the double quotes uh, next to the enter key. So, uh, and again, I'm just gonna kind of clarify here too for support, just to remind me what this path is. After we route them to this step, I'm going to put in that greeting I created earlier that said, please enter your customer number. Uh, in this case, I'm still gonna give them 10 seconds to enter, but in this case, I'm not sure how many digits might be in your particular customer number. Maybe there's three digits in your customer number, maybe there's five. Uh, I'm just gonna type in three, but obviously that would be something you'd do for your choice. And when we do the binding digits, I'm gonna call this customer ID. So whatever value the caller enters as their customer number, I'm gonna to save to customer ID. Uh, and note, that's just going to put it in the flow. That's not going to save it to a reporting engine or any, anything, unless we obviously do something later to make that happen. So I'm going to go after they enter their customer number, I want to actually route them into the support queue. So queue with media, and I'm going to go ahead and route them into the support queue. Obviously, I want to play that same hold music. Callback, we're going to leave it disabled, but if you choose to enable it, it can open up a lot more options here to work with. So by clicking callback, we're going to have more options or fewer options. And again, in this resource section, we are going to type in agent. And all that means is whatever agent I select out of the queue returns to this flow with this variable coming back to me. And then obviously I'm going to put that link right there to the queue with media step. So what we're going to do after this is we need to then leave a path if somebody fails to make a proper choice, right? Somebody might make a choice that is not one or is not two, and we haven't allowed our menu to do that. So I'm going to put a play media step in here, and I did put in that prompt down here where I said invalid entry. In other words, please retry. To use that, I go to the arrow here and I kind of drag it down. Rather than making it a conditional type, I'm going to make it a default type. And that's literally going to say that wherever the choice is not one or is not two, it goes down to this particular play media step. 
Now, when I go from that play media step, I would then send the caller back to the same menu. In other words, they didn't, they didn't press one, they didn't press two. I say, hey, please try again. And I send them back to the main connect digits menu. I'm also gonna just click in the middle of this arrow, not on the red X, but kind of out in the middle of the arrow. Click with my left mouse and drag, cause that can kind of make this look a little pretty. And if at any point you come into a situation where you don't like how an arrow looks, you can hover over and see how there's like a little black X that will show up when I hover underneath this dot. So I can do that and it'll revert back to this handling. If you make a mistake on any arrow, if you create an arrow that you can't get rid of, you can go ahead and hover over until you see the red X and that makes that arrow disappear. Um, and again, no matter where you are, you always connect the starting step to the step that follows it. So play media, I'm gonna go to this arrow, click and drag, go to collect digits, because I'm gonna go from here to here to here. And then again, I'm gonna click out here in the middle of the arrow, left drag out, just to make it look a little nicer. So now we've got a basic flow scoped out here. What I'm gonna do at this point is I'm going to, once I've returned the agent, so I know which agent is gonna be answering this interaction on each of these two instances, I am prepared now to add that caller into a conference with the agent. So I click on the key with media and I drag the arrow over to conference customer in. And I can do the exact same operation here on key with media. All this does is say, I figured out which agent is ready to take this call. Let's add the customer, the original calling customer into a conference with the agent. Because sometimes there might be some work you want to do prior to conferencing the customer in. But obviously in a very simple flow, that would be the only time you'd have to worry about that. Note that when you click on conference customer interaction, you do have a couple of different options to configure. The only one that we're going to use here is the record button, meaning that we are going to record this interaction. So yes or no. And in this case, the answer is yes. Now what we're gonna to wanna to do is thank the caller at the end of the interaction. So I'll go down to the play media step. And you might recall that I did a thank you, just a thanks for calling kind of a message here at the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that tutorial thank you here. And I'm gonna connect that conference customer to the play media step. So that's all set. Now the other part we're going to make happen is we're gonna request the caller have the ability to do a post-call survey uh, rating on a scale of one to five how they felt about the interaction with our company. So let's put that customer satisfaction score here. We are going to use that same invalid input entry. So in other words, if they don't enter a choice between one and five, we're gonna say, hey, sorry, that was not a valid choice. Please try again. And I can use the same logic. I'm gonna say that the max score is a score of five, right? Because I'm saying on a scale of one to five, they can go ahead and choose. The media step, we're going to be putting in a how we're asking the question. So when I created that satisfaction survey prompt, that's when I use this here. And this again, just says, hey, on a scale of one to five with five being the highest, please rate how our interaction with you was. And then the CSAT score is whatever value they enter you know, one to five. And I'm just gonna call this variable CSAT. Now again, the customer number that, that is entered here, the CSAT that is entered here, those don't immediately flow to the reporting engine. And we could save those later if we need to, but it just kind of gives you an opportunity to collect the question and get that all set around properly. So after the customer satisfaction score, we're going to thank the caller. So we're gonna have another play media step here. And the media step is just going to be that same thanks for uh, calling our system here. Go ahead and select this one here. Last but not least, we will go through and let them know that the call is done and they can hang up at any time. So uh, the same play media step down here and we'll say uh, thanks for calling, goodbye. All right, goodbye. Now every flow has to have a start and every flow has to have an end it is a good idea before ending a customer flow just to put a disconnect step in, just to make sure that for some reason there's not a call still out there hanging. Uh, there shouldn't be, obviously, but you know if you uh, want the call to be done, just go ahead and drop a disconnect step in to make that happen. Then drop in your exit step. Then you can connect your disconnect step to your exit step and your initial customer flow is completed. Now, the other thing that we can do in a flow is control how the agent themselves receives the flow. In other words, what is their uh, screen pop like? What 
messages do we give them? Do we allow for auto answer or not? Now you can be very, very, very detailed in how you do agent handling. You can draw a flow that looks just like this, that has all the agent handling pulled together. But for purposes of this demo, we are going to focus just on bringing in a resource flow in. So this resource flow is everything that happens on the agent's side. In other words, we want to give the agent 30 seconds to answer their ringing phone. Perhaps we want to select a certain set of dispositions. Maybe we want the agent to forcibly answer every disposition. So in other words, they are forced to say what happened on this call or not. Maybe we want the agent to do auto answer or not. Maybe we want the agent to go automatically into wrap up or not. Maybe we want the agent to opt out of wrap up or not. So all of these different things are all agent based decisions, right? Maybe we want to give the agent, let's say uh, 30 seconds to try to wrap up, but only let them take up to 120 seconds. Uh, do you want to pop an external screen or not? And obviously some other options in relation to how the call itself is answered. For purposes of this demo, what we're going to do is configure the resource flow so that the force disposition is going to be unchecked. We are going to basically have all of these options turned off except for auto wrap up, which will turn on. And that's going to allow the call to automatically flow through. Now there is one last important step that you got to remember. Anytime you go through a flow for the first time, there is a flow defaults that has to be populated. So if I just come here and hit publish, I'm going to get a note or a warning that we don't have some default values set. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that message. In this little gear icon next to the publish button, I can come in and set flow defaults. And again, this is just to make sure that we have the basic behavior of the flow covered for anything we might be missing. So my hold music is here. Some of these values may or may not be relevant. You know, how long do I let an agent attempt to transfer a call before I say that the caller they're transferring to is not answered? If I don't specify a target or a max wrap up time, then I can use the flow defaults to cover for that. So essentially, anytime you got one of those little red notices, you just want to populate that so that it's no longer red. And you'll see that everything else you can take pretty much by default. So then when I exit out and I hit the publish button, that goes through. Do I want to make the version active? Because remember, we'll retain every flow version you ever publish. So that way we can help you track what's happened on this flow over time. I'm going to call this initial publish and publish the active version of the tutorial flow.